Good afternoon. Welcome to the spring 2017 commencement of the College of St. Scholastica. My name is Michael Marsden, and I have the privilege of serving as the Interim Vice President for Academic Affairs. This is an important celebration of academic success, and it marks a very important milestone in our academic year. We would ask that you please stand, if you're able, for a performance by the American Indian drum group, the Wolf Clan, who will perform Honor Song. After the performance, please remain standing, face the flag, remove your hats, and join us in singing America the Beautiful, led by Professor William Bastion.
brotherhood with a brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Our thanks to Wolfland, to the Scholastic Brass, and to Professor William Bastion. Thank you. We will now have an invocation from Sarah Kroska, class of 2017. Loving God, today is a day filled with mixed emotions, happiness that we are embracing new paths, uncertainty about the future, and reflective of all that is changing around us, including relationships. You give us more than we could ask for every day. And yet here we are today at a new crossroad, requesting your help and guidance on this new adventure, which started long ago on our first day of kindergarten. Grant peace and joy in our hearts as we celebrate with friends, family, sisters, faculty, and staff. Whatever our career path and goals may be, continuously remind us of your values and help us to turn back to you every day. Thank you for gathering us around you today and for all the grace you have bestowed upon us. Father and Creator, thank you for teaching us to love and appreciate all of your creation. Please accept our thanks and praise for all the opportunities you have had and all the family and friends that we have met. Mold our hearts and stir up in us a passion to touch the world and spread your contagious love which you have given to us. Help us to work closely with you to find our place in the world which you have created. Thank you for all the blessings that help us grow in wisdom and light each and every day. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, Sarah. It's now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Christopher Dolan, Chairman of the College of St. Scholastica Board of Trustees. Please be seated. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of the College of St. Scholastica, it is my honor to welcome all of you graduates and your guests to Duluth on this wonderful afternoon. Commencement is a special and joyous occasion, the most important ceremony in the life of a college. It is also a significant moment for you and for your loved ones. Today is a time to look back on the challenges you have overcome to reach this milestone and then all the op an opportunity to reflect on the journey ahead. Most of all, it is a time to celebrate and to thank all those who have helped to get you where you are today. Your hard-earned degree is a privilege that will allow you to progress in your professional pursuits, but it is also a responsibility to be leaders in your communities and to model our Catholic Benedictine values of community, hospitality, respect, stewardship, and love of learning in all that you do. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stated that, quote, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. I know you have all gained both intelligence and character during your time at St. Scholastica, and I look forward to seeing how each of you will help to make our world a better place in the years ahead. Once again, welcome to our commencement ceremony. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Colette McCarrick-Geary President of the College of St. Scholastica. Congratulations, graduates, and welcome, family and friends. What a great joy and privilege it is for me to be with you today. The conferral of degrees is one of the most meaningful and rewarding responsibilities that I have as a president 
and one that I truly cherish. It will be my great honor to personally congratulate each of you as you walk across the stage today to receive your diploma. When you set out on your journey to this day, you joined a community committed to academic excellence and rooted in Benedictine values. You freely stepped out of your comfort zone to engage in some of the most challenging and meaningful experiences of your life. Your journey has not always been easy. You spent long nights immersed in research and writing papers. And you navigated snowy roads to make it to class on time. And you became a master of time management. And many of you did this while juggling jobs, sports, student leadership activities, and countless other responsibilities competing for your attention. And today, all of your sacrifice and hard work has paid off. Along with honoring all that you have achieved and celebrating the promise of all that you will accomplish in the future, this day also invites us to reflect on what sets you apart as a graduate of the College of St. Scholastica, as a saint. You have been part of a special educational community, one that recognizes that each student is a person of unique and immeasurable worth, that your distinctive personhood and your gifts are to be called out and fostered because they are of value to all of us. They are of great importance to the common good. With this in mind, we strive to educate the whole person. We use the Latin phrase, cor et anima, which means heart and soul. The College of St. Scholastica has, from its founding more than 100 years ago, been faithful to a vision of sending forth graduates to serve and transform this world. You now join the ranks of these distinguished alumni. Empowered and enlightened by what you have experienced here, you are well prepared to make a difference in the communities that you will become a part of in the years ahead. Most of all, I urge you to be eager to use the power of your education to serve those who are powerless and those who are suffering injustices. You will find them close at hand if you dare look. As the Gospel of Luke tells us, to whom much is given, much will be required. The Benedictine values that you have been steeped in during your years at St. Scholastica will guide you. On behalf of the Sisters of St. Scholastica Monastery and the faculty and staff of our college, congratulations to all of you, and my best wishes for a fulfilling, meaningful career and a joyful, rewarding future. It is now my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, who personifies the values that we hold dear. The Honorable Patrick J. Schiltz was born and raised here in Duluth. The recipient of a Benedictine scholarship he graduated summa cum laude from the College of St. Scholastica and was awarded the prestigious Harry S. Truman Scholarship, a highly competitive federal scholarship given for graduate education leading to a career in public service. Judge Schiltz graduated magna cum laude from Harvard Law School, where he was an editor of the Harvard Law Review. After serving as a law clerk to U.S. Supreme Court Justice Anton Scalia, George, Judge Schiltz practiced for six years as an associate and two years as a partner at Fager and Benson in Minneapolis. In 1995, Judge Schiltz left private practice to join the faculty of Notre Dame Law School, where he quickly became a popular professor and a nationally recognized scholar in the areas of legal ethics and appellate procedure. In a widely cited article on ethics that has been referred to as a classic, Judge Schiltz shared his Benedictine values with aspiring lawyers when he said this, being an ethical lawyer is not much different from being an ethical doctor or mail carrier or gas station attendant. You should treat others as you want them to treat you. Be honest and fair, show respect and compassion. Keep your promises. In 2000, Judge Schiltz left Notre Dame to become the founding Associate Dean of the University of St. Thomas School of Law. 
and in 2002, he was named the St. Thomas More Chair in Law, the first endowed chair at the School of Law. From 1997 to 2006, Judge Schiltz served as the reporter to the Advisory Committee on the Federal Rules of Appellate Procedure. In that capacity, he worked closely with many federal judges, including Judge John G. Roberts, Jr. and Judge Samuel A. Alito, Jr. Judge Schiltz was nominated to the federal bench by President George W. Bush on December 14, 2005, and his nomination was unanimously confirmed by the U.S. Senate on April 26, 2006. Judge Schiltz is married to Elizabeth R. Schiltz, a professor at the University of St. Thomas School of Law, and they have four children. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Patrick J. Schiltz. Thank you. <clears throat> I first want to put you at ease. As uh, Dr. Geary said, I was born and raised in Duluth, and so um, I don't find anything even a little strange about a college graduation occurring inside of a hockey rink. <laughs> Board still up, penalty box ready to go. Uh, the only thing that kind of surprises me is they took the ice out for you, I, uh, <laughs> rather than just uh, hand out skates with your cap and gown. Uh, I am uh, very happy to be here. Uh, I attended St. Scholastica from 1978 until 1981. It was a time of uh, hideous music and hideous haircuts and hideous clothing. Uh, I, I, I personally owned an olive green 100% polyester leisure suit <laughs> that, that looked fabulous with the white turtleneck and gold chain that I wore <laughs> with it. Uh, but at St. Scholastica, it was also a time of some incredible people who taught me through their words and through their deeds. Uh, and I'm particularly grateful for the sisters, the Benedictine sisters who taught at the college at that time. Sisters like Sister Timothy Kirby and Sister uh, Mary Richard Boo and Sister Mary Odile Cahoon and Sister Janelle Cahoon. Uh, all of them are gone now, uh, but they're people I think of often. Uh, and it's, it's great to be here with you. I had a hard time deciding what to say to you today, so what I decided to do is um, I thought back on all of the best decisions I've made in my own career, and I looked to see whether there was something that they had in common so I could take that something and give you one piece of advice that you might remember after today. And you graduates are smart, you're about to graduate from college, so let me ask you to see if you can tell what, what one thing had all of my best career decisions had in common. After I finished clerking at the United States Supreme Court for Justice Scalia, I was offered jobs by the biggest law firms in New York and Chicago and Washington. And at the time, they were offering $50,000 signing bonuses for Supreme Court clerks. Had I accepted any of those offers, I would not only have gotten the signing bonus, but I would today be making three or four million dollars a year. But I turned down those jobs so I could return to Minnesota and take a job at a law firm that paid me a signing bonus of zero and that paid me a salary that was about half of what the other firms were offering. All of those I knew in the legal profession told me that I was nuts. After I worked hard for eight years and became a partner in my law firm, I decided to start all over again as an entry-level professor not only did I give up my partnership in a big law firm, but my law firm had just won a $5 billion verdict in the Exxon Valdez oil spill case. I was told that if I just waited a couple years for my law firm to collect that verdict, I might become a millionaire. I gave up my partnership, I left the Exxon money behind, took a huge pay cut, and went to Notre Dame to teach and people in the legal profession told me I was nuts. After I worked hard at Notre Dame for about five years and I was just about to get tenured, I decided to move back to Minnesota to help build a brand new Catholic law school for the University of St. Thomas. I went from the top of my profession, about to be tenured professor at one of the world's great universities, to the bottom, trying to build an unaccredited law school from scratch and everybody in the legal profession told me that I was nuts. 
Now, hopefully you've spotted the theme here by now. All of my major career decisions were thought by other people to be nuts. Indeed, I made so many stupid decisions that at my swearing in as a federal judge, one of the speakers, who was my former dean at Notre Dame, felt obligated to explain to the audience what she called my steady downward spiral in my <laughs> career. Now, usually when you talk about a lawyer who's in a steady downward spiral, drugs or alcohol are involved, I did this completely sober. <laughs> and yet, because I was willing to make decisions time and again that other people thought were nuts, I have had a wonderful career in the law, I have met so many great people, and I have done so many interesting things, and I've had so many opportunities to make a difference in the lives of others. And now I have a job that gives me the chance to go to work every day, not to teach about justice or to plead for justice, but to do justice. And none of this would have been possible if I'd done what everybody else told me to do. Now, I know that many of you graduates are probably looking for a job right now, and you'd be happy at this point to take any job. I understand this, but you are young, uh, and you are going to have a lot of choices over the course of your career not only choices about what jobs to take, but choices about how you're going to live your life. There will be times when your values are going to conflict with the values of the world, with the values of the people around you. And you are gonna to have to decide whether to do what you think is right and suffer the disapproval of others, or do what others tell you is right and maybe miss out on something really special. Let me tell you about the best single decision I've ever made in my life, a decision that had nothing to do with the law and nothing to do with work. In 1995, my wife and I learned through prenatal testing that the baby she was carrying, our third child, had Down syndrome. Now, the world has a very definite view about what you should do when you find out that your unborn child has Down syndrome. About 95% of parents who hear that news choose abortion. My wife and I made a different choice. We made a choice that reflected our values. And no matter how long we live, we will never make a better decision because no matter how long we live, nothing will ever give us more joy than our son, whose name is Petey. Now, I could tell you 100 stories about Petey, but I want to share just one with you. Petey loves Christmas. I mean, everybody loves Christmas, but he loves, 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 loves Christmas. But he's not too smart, he is after all mentally disabled and he can't talk because he has a disability called apraxia of speech. So as a result, Pete for many years, he, he didn't understand time. He didn't know the difference between a day and a week and a month and a year. So every morning, Petey would wake up thinking, this could be Christmas. Now most days, precisely 364, are not Christmas, but that didn't discourage Petey. Instead, what he would do is after waking up every morning, he would run and grab one of his toys or his books or his DVDs, and he'd wrap it up, usually in newspaper or in a grocery bag. And then he'd bring the present to us. Now, at first we thought that Pete was giving us a present. No, he was handing us his present so that we could give it back to him. So we'd hand the present back to him every morning, and he would eagerly rip it open, and he'd go into spasms of delight, because it was exactly what he wanted. <laughs> so, Petey eventually figured out that every day is not Christmas, but Petey continues to bring great joy to our lives and the lives of others. He has made me and my wife and our other children uh, better people, and more than anything, he's helped us to really get a glimpse of the kind of love that God must have for all of us. He is an amazing boy, and he's the center of our universe, and I can't imagine life without him. Now, all of these decisions that I've mentioned to you, all of them were very difficult. People thought we were nuts, but these were the best decisions we ever made, and we were able to make these decisions only because we were able to act on our values and not on the values of the world around us. 
Now, I worry about you graduates. I worry that it's going to be harder for you to make similar decisions. When I was your age, it was easy for us to draw our values from our families and neighborhoods and churches because, frankly, they didn't have a lot of competition from the outside world. We didn't have computers or tablets or smartphones. We didn't have 150 channels of satellite television. We had three here in Duluth. We didn't have Facebook or Twitter. There were thousands of distinct communities, each with its own set of values. So if we wanted to resist the values of the wider world, we had a lot of support. Today, though, the world in which you are going to live, technology has turned the world into one giant high school with the quarterbacks and cheerleaders telling the rest of us what we have to do if we want to be considered cool. It can be difficult to find your own way in such a world, but I hope you will try. Consider the fact that in the values of this world, Kim Kardashian is someone to be celebrated, while your typical police officer or high school teacher is not. Consider also that if you measure your worth as a human being by money, or beauty, or popularity, or power, you are always going to feel inadequate because there will always be someone richer than you, or more beautiful than you, or more popular than you, or more powerful than you. Always. If you get sucked into playing this game, you will never feel like you've won. You're going to run faster and faster and faster, but there's always going to be a runner ahead of you, and the finish line will never come into view. So here is my parting wish for you today. I hope that each of you will have the courage to make decisions based on your own values and not on the values of the wider world. And if you ever find yourself struggling to be true to yourself, I hope you'll remember that if I had done what everyone told me to do, I never would have become a federal judge. And more importantly, I never would have enjoyed about 700 straight Christmas mornings. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you for that wonderful performance. Our student speaker today is Corey Barton. He's a senior with a social work major, and he's minoring in healthcare at the College of St. Scholastica. Community has been the Benedictine value that has been the bedrock for Corey's involvement in the College of St. Scholastica campus, as well as the Duluth area. Working with men as peacemakers on campus, he co-organized meetings for Party Revolution, a collection of students committed to preventing and intervening in sexual violence that too often take place in college social environments. The biggest message the group emphasized was that if a fellow student experiences sexual violence in our community, the welcoming environment and community has been compromised. They understand that many individuals build a community and if one individual experiences sexual violence, the strength of that community and trust has been broken. Taking his experience off campus, he completed many educational internships through the social work department. In these placements at places such as the public defender's office and at a local drug treatment center, it helped him strengthen community which became an everyday goal for him. Some of his academic successes throughout his college years include making the dean's list three semesters in a row, being part of the college's choirs and band, and serving the community, being a liaison and a mentor. Corey took part in the College of St. Scholastica band his freshman year and was part of the very select choir group, Vocal Revolution, in his junior year. And he's been a dedicated concert choir member since his freshman year. And today he leads the bass section of the choir. Additionally, he received the College of St. Scholastica Music Scholarship for his involvement in bettering music at the college. His plans after, gradu uh, after graduation are to remain in the Duluth area and obtain a job in youth or racial advocacy agencies. He also hopes to do social policy research and evaluation in the future with those very same agencies. So please join me in welcoming Corey Barden to the podium. Good afternoon. My name is Corey Barton, for those who, of you who don't know me. And for those of you who do know me but needed a refresher of what my name was, shame on you. Ever since I cut my hair, which about until a month ago was down below my shoulders, I assume I was that dude with the man bun, so I understand why you may not recognize me. I thought I'd make it my locks cut to be more professional in my career. And then I remembered that my profession, social work, there are men in the field who have man, man buns too. So that was a mistake on my part, I guess. So before I begin, there are countless student leaders who are forwarding CSS as an institution and creating change. And I want to thank you all for the work you have done as leaders of various clubs or departments on campus. I want to thank three other CSS student leaders in particular who have been recently recognized for their work as well. Emily Zimmer, Deanna Mena, and Taylor Bulk have been leaders of the CSS institution and the people around them by dedicating their time and energy to something bigger than themselves. And this includes the CSS theater, and collaborative learning groups, the Cable and McNair's program, the Center, of Just Li Center for Just Living, and the Social Work Department, and many more areas. These powerful women impacted with their passionate presence and dedication, so thank you. I'm honored to stand before you, my classmates, whether you're on or off campus students, online or extended study students, undergraduates, graduates, and doctoral students, the families of CSS students, professors, CSS staff and faculty. And I'm tasked with the job to the graduating class of 2017 to send us off in a blaze of passion, hope for the future, and duty to our future professions. So I will attempt to put out that message, but I cannot promise it. I'll be honest, it was very hard to figure out what I wanted to talk about. Should I talk about my experience? or try to have a message to connect to all of our experiences, or just go for it and try to do all of it. And I find that the best way to begin is with my story of my time here at the College of St. Scholastica. 
As some of you may know, I came into CSS as a pre-med intended major, and looking back, I'm not too sure how freshman year Corey would have felt knowing I would be receiving a bachelor's in social work as well as a drastic pay cut. But as we say in social work field, it's not all about the money. Not at all. As a few of my friends have joked, CSS really needs to write a book that's titled, I Once Was a Science Major, a CSS Student's Story. And I feel like that might help some worried or confused freshmen in the long run. But in all honesty, we came in not knowing what we were going to be, nor who we would transform into. We just went with our heart. And in talking about St. Scholastica, we all need to begin with the college's beginning and the foundation it would set for students since opening its doors in 1912. Seeing a need in the Northland for education and healthcare, the strong, passionate Benedictine sisters looked to the hillsides of Duluth and built something to help the people of Duluth area receive vital needs. Needs that would be allow them to live the lives that they want with dignity. The sisters devoted themselves to education, service, and justice to the Duluth area. In the beginning, they educated cohorts of skilled, strong women that would go into the world. And years later, they would open their doors to men and people all along the gender spectrum who would go into the world and live out the values of CSS. The sisters changed the landscape of Duluth forever. And that's not just Tower Hall, which we as students probably have to remind our visitors that it's not Hogwarts or a castle, even though we might pretend that it might be. And knowing that the sisters did something that they didn't have to do, rather were called to do, that was truly inspiring and served as a model for me in my journey. Almost every day I saw on the campus tunnels the Benedictine values of respect, stewardship, love of learning, community, and hospitality. And many opportunities for me arose from doing what I thought was right and what I thought would display the Benedictine values. My freshman year, in the middle of the semester, I was challenged to go on a trip to Mexico by my advisor, Professor Mary Tanner, who has since retired. And I was kind of unsure because I didn't know how this would feed into my career in medicine. However, Professor Tanner's freshman course that I was in was Global Health and Social Justice, and I felt a calling to go and rose to that calling. The CSS trip with students and faculty to Cuernavaca, Mexico, just south of Mexico City, ignited my passion for social justice. For I, for I learned about how the world works to favor a few and leave others, mostly common people, to struggle to live to their potential, both socially and economically. I took this vision and new awareness back to Duluth and to my everyday life, and I connected the work that the sisters did with what I wanted to do. And I asked myself, how can I make change? And from there on, I began to have a growing interest in experiences and emotions that others had that I, coming from southern Minnesota, didn't have. And this led me to the Center for Just Living, where I met friends that I will keep for a lifetime, and began my journey, journey into pursuing justice. I became active in social justice clubs and even co-organized the student-run Menace Peacemakers group, Party Revolutionaries, with my passionate and amazing co-workers Aisha Hassan and Elena Wald, and one of my very first mentors at CSS, Michelle Resset. This group sought to give tools to students on how to intervene and prevent sexual violence in social settings, which as we know is ravaging campuses across the United States. And being a part of a group that taught me many things about gender-based violence, why men feel comfortable walking alone at night and why women don't, and also what it means to call, my, call myself the F word, a feminist. Humor aside, this group, connected to the same mission and calling of the sisters, identified a need and sought to make meaningful change. The experience in Mexico would also lead me to find the social work profession, started and headed by a sister, that understands and implements the many ways how we can give the tools to empower that need to those that need help overcoming society's barriers. And being in community with the other CSS social work students, professors, and the spirit that the sisters of CSS exuded, I knew that we were set to effect change. And change people's lives just like the sisters did 
many years ago. And that's my story. Although not complete or in depth, really shaped the bad and the good experiences for me at CSS. Now, for us students, as soon as we entered into the educational career here at CSS, the Benedictine values are drilled into us. It's said to students and between students almost chant-like, but in reality, it stuck because it became a part of us, a part of our human fiber. It's almost as much of a part of us as Megan Perry Spears or, as, or MPS as students say with much, much love. It's almost like her chant, be bold, be Benedictine, which I have screamed at the top of my lungs to fill myself with emotional courage before I jump into Lake Superior. So like me, the values and the spirit of the sisters, whether by choice or not, made its ways into our lives. But it wasn't only MPS's chants or the Benedictine values or staying up late, it was many other factors that shaped our lives with St. Scholastica. So now, going against the promise that I had with a friend, I will dive into the cheesy and cliche commencement part, if I haven't already. We as students would not be here if it weren't for the friends we made, who served as our therapists or family members when we were away from home, who looked past our quirks and remained in relationship with us. For me, it's the friends I made in the Center for Just Living, my role models, people that I look up to and who I go to for advice or insight who, although not needing to, embraced me and showed me new perspectives and experiences of our world. And these lifelong friends helped me create and nurture a new form of empathy and understanding who all helped me find what it truly means to be a man in this world and identify foundational values. Values like expressing, expressing emotion, passion, empathy, communication, hard work, and never-ending love and openness. For me, it's the professors, social work, theology, music, and English professors who helped me find my voice to call out injustices and grow my focus of enacting real, palpable change we would not be here without our professors or faculty. Whether it was holding online conference calls to answer questions, or taking our emails at 3 a.m. about the paper that's due in five hours, serving as our advisors, telling us what will hurt or benefit our career. We would not be here without the staff of CSS, who we may not see every day, but are there, coming to community events, supporting the college and the students, creating a more beautiful campus that would surely fall into ruin without their hard work and dedication. So thank you, CSS staff. For me, my family, who provided the base of the care and compassion that I would lead into my adulthood, who looked past the moodiness of my teenage years, who were willing to work through hard, hard times and remain one, who stood as role models for me. Thank you. We would not be here without the ones we love, whether that is our families or our partners or our spouses. For us, the ones we consider family, who know us deeply, who support us unwavering, who without expectation of praise or acknowledgement do things for us just to simply make us a more whole and successful human being because they love us. There are many other uncountable factors that led to us in this moment now, being in this space together, about to receive our degree. So now, to wrap up, I will end with one word and I hope you take it with you. Empathy. Unlike sympathy, empathy is the ability to look at the world from the perspective of a person other than yourself. And this includes analyzing emotions, feelings, thoughts, and reactions that that person may have. And empathy, I argue, is the base for moral, ethical decision making. Because going into the future and our careers, we may need to make decisions that drastically affect people's lives. For some of us, it's not clinicals, it's not field placements anymore. If we do not employ empathy as a tool to forming decisions, then we have created decisions that may negatively affect people. And there's a quote that I like to live that I like and I live through my life. 
Decisions about us, without us, hurt us. And this says we shouldn't make decisions that affect people or communities, whether it's communities of color, the LGBT community, the undocumented community, women, indigenous communities, poor, homeless, or elders, without those communities or persons having a stake in the conversation and decision making. That is the base of empathetic decision making. We must be in community with each other, have tough talks while being mindful of empathy, draw each other closer, not further apart. So in true spirit of the sisters who went to the daisy fields, to the hillside of Duluth and built the school we are about to be alumni of, we must be brave and fearless to do what may not be asked or expected of us. We must go to our own hillsides and build something meaningful and ask and do what furthers community, communication, dignity, and justice for all those who enter our world. And there's a quote from a book I love by Bruce Perry. It is often when wandering through the emotional carnage left by the worst of humankind that we find the best of human, humanity as well. We must go through the carnage that may be left by humanity and find the humanity in the world. So go, be bold, be Benedictine, quote MPS. Chase down carnage and injustice, embrace empathy and understanding, lead by example, have power with, not power over, and make change in a world longing for a sense of community and justice. The world needs more saints. Be one. Thank you, Corey. Dr. Geary, it is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled have qualified in all respects for the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degrees by successfully completing curricula offered by the academic departments of the College of St. Scholastica and have been recommended by the Faculty Assembly and the Board of Trustees to be entitled to all the rights, privileges, and honors as well as the obligations and responsibilities pertaining thereunto. Baccalaureate graduates, please stand. <laughs> by, virtue, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the College of St. Scholastica, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts and or Bachelor of Science for which you have qualified with all attendant honors, privileges, and responsibilities. I would ask that the very first row please stay standing, all the other candidates please be seated. Dr. Tammy Ostrander, Dean of the School of Arts and Letters, will read the names of the Webster Scholars, for those of you who know, don't know what the Webster Scholars are, they're the graduates of the Honors Program, and the Bachelor of Arts degree recipients.
Rachel Lynn Anderson. <laughs> Stephanie Anderson. <laughs> Bailey Barber. <laughs> Ana Maria Camelo Vega. <laughs> Evangelista Tchecho. Alexandra Crum. Mary Etchison. Rachel Foss. Thank you. Lydia Y. Grumish. Blake Holbrook. Sarah Nicole Kroska. Alexa Casey Lynn Lee. Just bring it down a little bit. Sophia Pineda Quinones. Joshua Robeck. Christian Walter Schmidt. Emily Schoff. Chelsea Cassandra Silvers. Isabella Amira Williams. Anthony James Adenzak. Brina Marie Alfredson. <laughs> Sabrina Renee Allison. Jill Marie Anderson. Sadie Marie Anderson. Melinda Aubin. Maurice Bacala. Janelle Marie Barney. <laughs> Kayla Nicole Bauer. <laughs> Kyle Joseph Bullio. Ashley Rose Beckman. Kyler Berg. Mason Bloomquist. Taylor Belk. David James Bone. Kelsey Lynn Box. Lydia Boyer. Nicole R. Brewer. Colleen Bruce. Alexandra Bowie. Samuel Joseph Burns. Corey Matthew Barden. Michaela Alicia Campbell. Stephanie Marie Catton. Joseph Chell. Quentin Chervinko. Shelby Shimalecki. Shimalecki. Donovan Gary Chalk. Paige Mary Christensen. Isaac Coyle. Anna Michelle Slice Coyne. Catherine David. Jerrica Ann Decker. Scotty Elizabeth Deming. Annalisa Marie Dietz. Samantha Jo Dills. Harrison Dernberger. Timothy Dolan. John Donlin. Darby Ray Ellison. Logan Ingolstadt. Tasha Engesser. Kaylee Nicole Erickson. 
Tyler Ray Erickson, Christine Etima, Elizabeth Catherine Evans, Kyle Louis Ferrer, Nicole James Farrell, Shane Thomas Finnegan, Shawane A.B. Folks, George Dale Foote Jr., Joseph Fosley, Don Marie French, Michaela Gans Brown, Karen Gavilan Topes Teco, Taylor Ann Gibson, Maggie Gilmore, Lauren Ganya. Kalina Christine Grotus, Miles Hagen, Molly Marie Hagen, Josh Hansen, Rachel Hansen, Emily Grace Hansen, Emily Noel Hansen. Ian Slade Havlick, Christopher Michael Hecker, Paul M. Hegstrom III, Alexandra Louise Hodgkins, and Louise Hofius, James Holmquist. Todd Hutori Jr., Marissa Hutterer, Sheila Oluchi Etihi, Zachary Jelinek, Cassandra Jindra, Alexandra Johnson. Michael Andrew Johnson, Reed Johnson, Nicholas Lawrence Kaplan, Sagrida Kedabedi, Deanna Gwen Keller, Emily Jo Ann Kessler, Michaela Grace King, Andrea Ella Kittleson, Ian Michael Kramer, Marissa Kranz, Alison Christine Krautbauer, Michaela I. Krikova. Carla Marie Kulias, <laughs> Emma Larson, Jack Patrick Lee, <laughs> Jamin Philip Luzo, Elena Marie Levings. Patrick Lynn, Carly Mary Loney, Virginia Ruth Lord, Janessa Lott, James Lovren, Megan Lozonski. Nicole Marie Mannion, Jeremy Lee Menthe, Jason, 
Jace Lamar Mayberry. Oh! Emily Ann Mahan. Peter A. Megariotis. Diana Irene Mena. Alexandra Joanne Miller. Spencer R. Moeller. Samaj Malik Moore. Cassie Marie Matt Morantz. Stephen Fox Mugenberg. Jessica May Murphy. Emma Miles. Doreen Faye Mayday. Ashley Nels. Benjamin David Nelson. Danielle Irene Nelson. Emily Nelson. Victoria Joy Nugget. Megan Taylor O'Sell. Paige Ann Oland. Francisco Hernandez Ortiz. Nafisa Amen. Abigail Marie Otis. Jamie Lynn Page. Gina Corrine Palma. Harrison Patrick Park. Brandon Coase Perone. Emily Mary J. Peterson. Craig Robert Peterson. Stephen Fee. Shannon Christine Phelps. Sarah Plankers. Celine Marie Provost. Rebecca Pugsley. Krista Pilkey. Darlene J. Rainey. Clay Red the Second. Rachel Rebecca Reese. Morgan Ann Ricky. Megan Kathleen Riley. Catherine Rotering. Lori Pernu Rogers. Kayla Maria Ropers. Marissa Russell. Michael A. Ryan. Alyssa Sari. Michaela Nicole Sams. Kyle Steven Sather. My source. Lor Sayang. Madeline Scanlon. Brady Nicholas Schaefer. Grant Mitchell Schenke. Paul G. Schultzenberg. <clears throat> Natalie Sell. Jamie Seamson. <clears throat> Stephen Simonson. <clears throat> Dane Sislo. Angela Ruth Snedker. Jessica Rose Solberg. Connor Squires. Jessica Steele. Robert Stensing. Elizabeth M. Stohog. 
Derek Jacob Sutliff. Jace Timothy Swanson. Carissa Swarski. Frank Joseph Tellerico. Joseph Thomas. Takea Taiguasan Green. Hannah Elisa Tibbetts. Sophia Titus. Megan Elizabeth Tomchak. Sarah Kaylin Tomlinson. Shayla Topping. Thomas Treholt. Bao Vang. Lavenda Van. <laughs> Jordan Vesna. Adam John Relenta. Andrew J. Westergren. Lisa M. Wellhaven. Colin Elizabeth Wheeler. Mariah Willis. Janet Lee Wise. Garrett Wolfram. Chloe Wolski. Zachary J. Wood. Amanda Marie Yelanimi. Rebecca Zubancic. That's it. Abby Marie Anderson. Dr. Aileen Beer, Dean of the School of Sciences, will read the names of the Bachelor of Science degree recipients. Alyssa Rose Anderson. Nathan Jeffrey Anderson. Stephanie Olson Anderson. Ashley Ashmore. Michelle Margaret Aben. Kristen Lois Bagley. Elena J. Baker. Brittany M. Balistrary, Laura May Bando, Alexandra Lee Varsity, Madeline Ann Bartlam, Chelsea Bastier, Lisa Travis Belk. Megan Marie Morgan, excuse me. Morgan Marie Belfi. Keisha Belshan. Bailey Bernard. Rita B. Rebecca Blashko. Jacob Blong. Dory Nicole Bukuski. Jaden Bonacera. Ashley Nicole Boone. Jennifer L. Branham. Jill Joanna Brethorst. Emily Brinkman. 
Cody P. Carlson. Heather Carlson. Katie Patricia Cheney. Dana Louise Cook. Timber Cooper. Katie Daigle. Andrea Doby. Olivia Ann Deshane. Abigail Daler. Holly May Delagardel. Evelyn Lucille DeLong. Kaylee Ray DeSmet. Cassidy Lane Dunkley. Brittany Ann Duresky. Justine Marie Dvorak. Noel Ray Elvechem. Brianna Epson. Connor Austin Foppel. Sydney Ann Figgy. Lynette S. Fisher Charles. Jenna Yazik. Kayla Marie Fogel. Charlie Joseph. Franklin, Harrison A. Fox, Garrett Robert Garberich, Savannah Grace Gerlock, Patrick James Gillespie, Riley Grasser Hammer, Brandon Greenwald, Madeline Gregerson, Samantha Joe Gronsky, Petra Ann Joanne Samantha Gums. Beth Ann Gursky. Freddie Joseph Guzman. Angela Heider. Sierra Hanowski. Ellen Hansen. Valerie L. Harvey. Lauren Hassler. Devika Rose Hen. Mitchell James Herzog. Mackenzie Elizabeth Higgins. Victoria Rose Highmark. Andrew Hiltner. Emily A. Holmgren. Abigail Rose Hopfer. Jennifer Catherine Hortness. Cindy Rose Horton. Hannah Ray Hover. Emily Louise Wren, 
Anne Elizabeth Hunstiger. Bobby Huatari. Lisa Ito. Emily Jansen. Alyssa Diane Jerome. Blair Johnson. Brian D. Johnson. Jordan Nicole Johnson. Julius Randolph Blaine Johnson II. Kendra Babs Johnson. Mary Angeline Johnson. Amanda S. Jones. Shana Rose Jorgensen. Anya Kadiovich. Hannah Marie Caldwell. Natasha Bree Kalkis. Madeline Rose Carroll. Samantha Jolene Katz. Jason Kislauskas. Anwar Kamal. Karen Marie Kirsting. Nicole Kinsley. Glennis Clares. Shea Lynn Kleinschmidt. Sarah Jean Custer. Laura Jean Custer, excuse me. Sony Panaku. Mary Kramer. Jessica Kreckelberg. Megan Cry. Jacqueline La Liberty. Melinda Lambert. Isabel Grace Enval Lawrence. Mary Layette. Melissa Lemke. Danielle Lesmeister. Isaac Nathaniel Lewis. Casey Gail Livingston. Jennifer Lohr. Mark Robert Loscheider. Caitlin Cam Lugie. Danielle Luke. Jenna Mangini. Christina A. Mariani. August Marlow. Mikhail Mazur. Cassandra Radmila McCabe. Luke McCracken. Megan Lee McCusker. Zachary James Meekle. Alexis Melvy. Ashley Christine Michelson. Molly Pauline Mickelson. John Edward Mike. Brandon Millen.
Margaret H. Minareth. Catherine Mullen. Lindsay Elizabeth Bonson. Amanda Michaud. Colin Mulcahy. Raphael Mumber. Jody Munson. Anna Nelson. Cassandra Elaine Nelson. <laughs> Vanessa and John. Carly Neiman. Kelsey Norlander. Amy North. Matthew O'Connor. Kirsten Olson. Maria Claire O'Shaughnessy. Anna Ostergaard. Peter Edward Pananen. Dakota Paulson. Anna M. Pavlichuk. Karn Christine Peterston. Stephanie Peters. Kaylee Jean Petty. Rafael Emmanuel Pichardo. Alexander Jovan Piltich. Sean Pullman. Courtney Ann Prawl. <laughs> Tina M. Pryor. <laughs> Ruby Prisbo. Jordan Pervilski. Allison Michaela Ryich. Heather Ann Riley. Bethany Ann Ruder. Gladys Reyes. Alexis Suzanne Reynolds. Shannon Ricky. Claire E. Ringley. Hannah Marie Russert. Samantha Susan Satoff. Jimmy Souser Denicia. Sabrina Schnell. Chelsea Schuel, Madison Schweiters, Amy Ann Seguin, Diana Sevenzai, Andrea Lorraine Shevich. Crystal Marie Siegel. Rachel N. Siebertson. Brenna Morgan Smith. Isaac Marvin Snow. Jerry Lee Soderberg. Kelly Staub. Alyssa M. Stangler. Andrea Stankowitz. 
Mariah Jo Steffen. Audrey May Steiner. Courtney Stempinski. Crail Richard Stringer. Ashley Schwiel. Nancy New Tao. Jenna Rose Tomford. Charles Thorpe. Adam J. Tran. Joshua Trosen. Elizabeth Eubel. Bobby Verbout Duncan. Tanner Jesus Verduska. Kevin Von Ruden. JC Bonasek. Melina Mary Valerius. Sarah Welly. Rachel Colleen Wieben. Angela Waller. Samantha L. Wolf. Zayu Yang. Tori Zime. Nicole Zim. Emily Ann Zimmer. So please join me in congratulating all of our Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degree recipients. We are now moving to the conferring of the Master's and Doctoral degrees. Dr. Geary, it is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled have qualified in all respects for the degrees by successfully completing the graduate curricula offered by the College of St. Scholastica and have been recommended by the Faculty Assembly and the Board of Trustees to be entitled to all rights, privileges, and honors, as well as the obligations and responsibilities pertaining to the degrees Master of Arts, Master of Science, Master of Education, Master of Business Administration, Master of Social Work, Doctor of Nursing Practice, or Doctor of Physical Therapy. Masters and doctoral graduates, please stand. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the College of St. Scholastica, I do hereby confer upon you the degree for which you have qualified, Master of Arts, Master of Science, Master of Education, Master of Business Administration, Master of Social Work, Doctor of Nursing Practice, or Doctor of Physical Therapy, with all attendant honors, privileges, and responsibilities. All but the first row may be seated. Dr. Joe Olson, Dean of the School of Education, will read the names of the Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, and Master of Education degree recipients. Master of Science degree recipients, 
Master of Social Work recipients and Certificate Program recipients. Dr. Rose. Joshua P. Davis. Andrew Jenkins. Jason Christopher McDonald. Robert Martins. Roger Allen Nelson. Jacques Sylvie Abanviza. Julia Marie Bates. Sean Michael Bernhardt. Eric Ronald Clement. Erica S. Danielski. Marta Diaz Quaresma. Jennifer A. Gist. Ross Robert Gunderson. Chris Harlan Johnson. Carrie Jones. Jonna Laver. Marcus E. Lubaka. Sherry Nowak. Nathaniel Allen Operud. Jonathan William Otis. Anshul Paranjape. Marisha Lee Park. Nam Provost. Christine, Christina Ann Schack. Christine Schwartz. Justin Wheelock. Ellie Jean Wilson. Ying Kong Yang. <laughs> Megan Anderson. <laughs> Valerie L. Barber. <laughs> Anita Noreen Giel. <laughs> Jennifer Bourbonnet. <laughs> Amanda Morley. Mary Frances Musich. Courtney Olin. Tyler Olin. Carolyn Ann Peterson. Jordan A. Pierce. Matthew Paul Wade. Maria Zimke. Gagandeep K. Ball. Denise Michelle Banny. Colleen Bartlett. 
Andrea Betchen. Allegra Catherine Verzai Hanula. Kelsey Jo Bachland. Juliana Boyum. Elizabeth Catherine Brommel. Jacob Scott Brucehaver. Megan Christine Cannon. <laughs> Philip David Carlson. Jacqueline Joanne Cupid. <laughs> Kelly P. Dale. Eamon L. Darby. Mark Henry Dunham. Alyssa Elliott. Marley Nicole Erickson. Karen Ann Faber. Jessica Fisher. Angela Marie Gayworth. Katherine Gibson. Emily Ann Goodflesh. Rebecca Teresa Harris. Emily Lynn Hawk. Rachel Elise Hendrickson. Kirsten Luann Hank. Alexa Nicole Herbst. Kat Katrina Jean Huff. William John Jensen. Morgan Lamott Keel. Catherine P. Kitt. Jordan L. Kitch. Ashley Ann LaPlante. Amy Beth Nelson Lesh. Maggie Jean Malika. Allison R. May. Faith Ann McCoy. Melanie Ann Meister. Ryan Matthew Miwa. Elija Momat. Krista Nicole Montroy. Jacob Martin Nasland. Thomas J. Nixon. Bailey M. Olson. Thomas Anthony Olson. Cheryl Panko. Cassandra Ann Karski. Carmen Maria Peraza. Jose Cecile Plant. Rachel Pazervinsky. Caitlin Ann Riemann. Alyssa Ray Rodland. Holly F. Sandifer. Anna Claire Schaefer. Victoria M. Sexer. Madeline Cecilia Shorter Hall. Alisa Spildy. Sarah Ann Stensfield. Mac Matthew Nicholas Swanson. Nicholas Henry Thell. 
Phil M. Thorne. Danielle Nicole Tollefson. Jillian Tomshi. Sydney Vanderveen. Francisco Xavier Vasquez. Matthew Lewis Vold. Scott Wadey. Megan Ward. Jaden Christine Wentz. Sarah Adeline Lucilla Whitchurch. Jocelyn Whitkern. Catherine Weir. Mitchell Warren Wilkinson. Abigail Witt. Julie Deborah Woodford. Sean Timothy Woodland. Renee Brechter. Danielle Catherine Carter. Nicole Collins. Tierney Christine Garver. Jamie M. Gordon. Megan E. Hedrington. Eileen Radiance Huggins. Caitlin Ann Huna. Forrest Jubland. Cassandra K. Kingbird. Selena Lawerson. Nicole Ann Leland. Abigail M. Lingwall. Alette Likens. Marco Isaac Palacios Medina. Anna Lisa Pelto. Alyssa J. Reardon. Charity Marie Riley. Shanna Lee Roberts. Connie Denise Roy. Charlene Santmeyer. Lucas Shear. Amy Schumacher. Kimberly Renee Severe. Aaron Elizabeth Devaney Therian. Evan Hans Tunstra. Caitlin Emma Tunstra. Stephanie Ruth Warwas. Anna Evelyn Dawn Welly. Gia Jean. Dr. Uh, Julie Anderson, Dr. Julie Anderson, Dean of the School of Nursing, and Dr. Bruce Lopno, Dean of the School of Health Sciences, will hood the doctoral candidates. Dr. Lynn Hamry, Dean of the School of Business and Technology, will read the names of the recipients of the Doctor of Nursing Practice and the Doctor of Physical Therapy degrees. Caitlin Mary Bhopal. Danielle Mary Cohen.
Tanya Eifler. Dr. Julie A. Goldfein. Dr. Erica Lauren Miller Green. Dr. Jessica L. Idaho. Dr. Vivian Ma Iguachau. Dr. Joan M. Kotala. Dr. Jennifer Love. Dr. Denise Marie Lund. Dr. Katie Mahaker. Dr. Stephanie K. Meyer. Dr. Gretchen Margaret Ann Moan. Dr. Brittany Ann Ortler. Dr. Carrie Marie Rengo. Dr. Megan Eileen Rochefort. Dr. Franklin Joseph Schwartz. Dr. Andrea Simon. Dr. Melissa Scoff. Dr. Lisa Mary Smebby. Dr. Deepak Agawal. Dr. Rachel, Rachel Avalalamont. Dr. Deborah Lister Betts. Dr. Gabriel J. Champeau. Dr. Tessa Comstock. Dr. Christina Ann Kraft. Dr. Anand Desai. Dr. Margaret Michelle Dolan. Yeah. 
Dr. Benjamin Dullum. Dr. Cheryl Antoinette Durant. Dr. Megan Erickson. Dr. Kyle J. Flagstead. Dr. Victoria Carolyn Galante. Dr. Jonathan Gall. Dr. Hannah Gartner. Dr. Colleen Marie Gahan. Dr. Corey Gebhardt. Dr. Selimar Gentica. Dr. Mikhail P. Golbin. Okay. Dr. Randy Melaton Grahalis. Dr. Niha Mogi Gamadi. Dr. Caroline Suzanne Guangni. Dr. Catherine Noel Hargu. Dr. Molly Haas. Dr. Jennifer L. Heckroth. Dr. Alexander Hees. Dr. Elizabeth Horn. Dr. Alexandra Hillig. Dr. Matthew Arthur Eric Jacob. Dr. Lita Jello. Dr. Nancy Lynn Johnson. Dr. Christopher Kaplan. Dr. Laura Lynn Kettle. Dr. Hannah Lynn Lenich. Dr. Dennis G. Lumowick. Dr. Lauren Marie Lynch. Dr. Anna Liza Meningas. Dr. Kayla Marie Mansour. Dr. Gerard Paterno. Dr. Colin Jacob Marks. Dr. Cole Patrick Molitor. Dr. Rebecca Monteforte. Dr. 
Dr. Mansi Nanda. Dr. Anna Lynn Nordman. Dr. Brett Nowatney. Dr. Ansom Nwosu. Dr. Rebecca Lynn Oswald. Dr. Justin Peratalo. Dr. Marvin Manaliga Rarama. Dr. Brian Riley. Dr. Irma J. Rosa Keynes. Dr. Hansel Rose Ruiz Achanzar. Dr. James B. Scarpacci. Dr. Brenna Schmidt. Dr. David Stefan. Dr. Kelsey Elizabeth Swiles. Dr. Rita Marlene Sobinski. Dr. Susan Tazi Heshley. Dr. Caitlin Brianna Vaughn. Dr. Rachel Marcelino White. Dr. Allison Wolf. Dr. Kalia April Yang. The Doctor of Nursing Practice graduates and the nursing professors are wearing flowers in honor of doctoral student Pamela Waitala, who would have graduated today. Pamela passed away unexpectedly in the spring of 2016. The white flower represents remembrance, the yellow ribbon symbolizes friendship, and the blue ribbon signifies Pamela's time at the College of St. Scholastica. Members of Pamela's family are here with us today. Thank you for coming. Okay, please join me in congratulating all of these graduates. And now graduates, it is time to move your tassels from the right to the left.
These ceremonies always celebrate the accomplishments of the graduates, but they sometimes neglect the tribute due to those who were and are in large part responsible for the very success that we celebrate. And it's time now that we honor those who have devoted years of sacrifice, energy, worry, encouragement, and even money in order that you graduates would have the opportunity to be where you are today. So may I ask that there be no applause until I so indicate. First, will all of the faculty members who have guided these graduates' learning experiences please rise. And next, will the parents of these graduates please rise. And now will the spouses and children of these graduates please rise. And now will all the grandparents of these graduates please rise. And now will all the brothers and sisters, fiancés, aunts, uncles, friends, anyone who has had anything to do with the lives of these successful graduates, please rise. Professor Bill Bastion to lead us in the singing of the school song accompanied by the Scholastic Brass. The song is printed in your program, so will you please rise and join in the song. Rock and roll. <laughs> We are faith to Alma Mater, pledge to her heart and hand. Wherever we bide, she'll be our guide. We will praise her throughout the land. Lakes and hills and spreading campus, all thy natural charms we love. And we glory in thy greatness. Blessed with favors from above. Pledge we our faith to Alma Mater. Pledge to her our heart and hand. Wherever we bide, she'll be our guide. We will praise her throughout the land. When in faith and knowledge grounded, enter we the world of strife. May thy counsels, strong and holy, aid us in our course through life. Pledge we our faith to Alma Mater, pledge to her our heart and hand. Wherever we bide, she'll be our guide. We will praise her throughout the land. Please be seated. We will now hear from Nicole Miller, Alumni Association Board President and a member of the class of 1999, followed by a benediction by Doreen Made, class of 2017. Upon the conclusion of our commencement, faculty and staff will be available to greet graduates and their families and friends in the Lake Superior Ballroom located in the Duluth Entertainment Convention Center. We hope to see all of you there. Good afternoon. As president of the College of St. Scholastica's Alumni Association, it is my great privilege to now welcome you as the newest members of our community, now numbering more than 25,000 around the world. 
As time goes by, the college and your experiences of it will bring a sense of recognition to you and will also serve as a lifelong connection for you. There are many ways that each of you can stay in touch with the people, the places, and the spirit of this college. I strongly encourage you to maintain your relationships and to stay active within this community. We have alumni groups throughout the nation and we invite you particip to participate because you are and always will be Saints for Life. Following commencement, the Alumni Association would like to celebrate your success and invites you for cake, coffee, and punch into the Lake Superior Ballroom right here in the deck. You may find the ballroom by signs at the back of this entrance. Congratulations, graduates. Your success is well-deserved, and we are very proud to welcome you into our forever family of saints. Now I ask everyone to please stand for the benediction. Buju, Nigani Wabanu Kwe and Jinakaj, Mushkazibi and Junjaba, Mikanaknan Dodaim. My spirit name is Woman Looking to the East. I am Bad River Ojibwe, and Turtle is my clan. It has been told to me that I should introduce myself to the spirits in this way when I speak or pray. I want to begin by acknowledging the four sacred directions, Wabanung the east, Gawaitanung the north, Jawanung the south, and Nigabinung the west, and to give thanks for Nimama Aki the earth, Nibi the sacred water that is life, Mitegug and all the plants, for our animal brothers, and for our most sacred Sema, for all those spirit beings that make our life here possible. Today is a beautiful day. Miigwech to our Creator for this day, for another day to good, do good work and walk in a good way. Miigwech to our ancestors who have come before us. Miigwech to our families and friends who stand beside us today and who have helped us on our journey. Miigwech to those who could not be here with us today. Miigwech to the faculty and staff, and especially the Sisters of St. Scholastica, for your dedication to higher education and the Benedictine values. Miigwech for our struggles and hard times, for they have helped us to face our fears and persevere, and have made this day that much sweeter. Miigwech for all of those who have prayed for us, believed in us, supported us, loved and cared for us on our journey. Many of us would not be here today without you. Cre Creator, we ask that you continue to watch over us. We ask for eyes that see the beauty all around us and hearts that are always grateful and open to receive your gifts. Give us clear minds and gentle words that uplift others. Help us to follow the seven grandfather teachings of wisdom, love, respect, bravery, truth, humility, and honesty in all we do. Make rich, Creator, for this beautiful day. Aho, Nikani Gana.